All right, we are back with another South African knife today to talk about. And this one is pretty special. It's special for a couple of reasons. One, it came from Africa Custom African Custom Knives website. Go check them out. They feature all of the uh, South African makers. It's kind of a, uh, I don't know if you'd call it like a one-stop shop for the South African makers to send their stuff from South Africa to, I think they're in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, and then they can sell them easily here in the United States. Okay. So this one did get shipped to me from them. However, the way it came about getting to me was Joyce Stain, Peter Stain's wife, who does more of her social media, more of the company's social media and uh, marketing, if you will, and more customer interaction comes from Joyce. Okay. She reached out and said, Hey, you have done a video from my husband previously, would you be interested in seeing one of his latest creations? I said, absolutely. I, I was really stunned and shocked and, and, and honored because I don't get knife makers reaching out to me very often. Um, I am friends with several knife makers. This is a play on a friction folder, which we're going to get into, but I want to tell a little bit of the story as well. So I don't really get contacted by makers asking if they can send me things. Um, I have a lot of friends that are makers and even my friends that are makers, and this is not a dig against them. They're never reaching out and saying, Hey, can I send you something to film? And send back like they don't do that either but anyway peter stein and his wife joyce actually did and i was super honored it came to me from like i said african custom knives and this is the latch 22 model here's a little bit about it um peter typically does friction folders where there is no stops. This one has stops like a slip joint. But typically it just swings open. This tab here, or this tang, if you will, will be encased by your hand to hold the blade from closing. And it's all just done by friction and the pressure of your hand. Okay. Very traditional, very common style in knife making. A lot of makers, um, their first entry into uh, folding knives often is a friction folder. Typically, that's not my favorite look with the tang hanging out like that. This one he has fashioned into a bottle opener. So there is some functionality there and or a uh, glass breaker on the tip if you would like. So this does give some closed functionality. All right, so very cool. This one, he also added a pocket clip. A lot of times friction folders do not have pocket clips. This is a just a spring steel pocket clip that works great and I have carried this. I've posted a few pictures on my Instagram. If you're not following my Instagram, you should be like you really should be. I do EDC pictures and stuff, but I also do a bunch of memes. I do some food stuff like travel stuff like that's, you know, kind of a window into Dirk's personal life. If that is something that interests you, check it out. There's a link in the description for my Instagram. There you go. Um, shameless little plug. So in talking with uh, Joyce and Peter, Peter actually sent me an email with quite a few details about this. Um, so this is the Latch 22 because he always felt after making hundreds, if not thousands of friction folders that they needed an upgrade, but he didn't want to go full 
you know, frame lock, liner lock, you know, whatever. So he put four ball bearings, spring-loaded bearings in here to give it those positive stops. And I think that's really cool. I like that so much more than just a friction folder. So it is a slightly bigger than his other folders as well. Um, so the Latch 22 kind of is a play on Catch 22 because it looks like a friction folder, but once you get it in the hand, it's no longer a friction folder. So it's very cool. Um, a couple of other little details that you wouldn't really notice is the scales. Three layer, three layer kind of a sandwich. So what I thought was a little unique, that inner layer is actually just black Kydex. I don't know that I've seen Kydex used in knife handle material before. It's generally G10. Okay, so it's Kydex, a red acrylic, and then the black G10. I think it looks great. I think it's a it's just a a sharp looking knife, if you will, and like, yeah, you get it. I love the red and black. That is kind of my color scheme in life. I think it's very cool. I like the little details on the spine of the blade, just kind of the finishing there. And overall, I really like this knife. Now, in talking to Joyce after I did the unboxing. She reached out because I had mentioned in the unboxing I did not know where this was going once I was done with it. And she grace, graciously wrote back after she saw my video and said that they purposely did not include a return shipping address for me because they wanted me to keep this and have this as my first South African knife that I have owned. And I'm, again, that goes back to why this is so special to me and why I'm honored. And again, I don't have makers reaching out to me, loaning me knives, let alone giving me knives. I have gotten a few things over the almost four years I have been doing my channel, but mostly it's gifts from other friends, like my friend Alex or a viewer that you know, I've become really good friends with because they've been sending me stuff back and forth and they'll give me, you know, some small little token, which, which is super appreciative. I'm never asking people to give me things, but super honored that I was given this. So that has no bearing on the fact that I enjoy it. I would have done this full video in the same exact manner had I needed to send it back. So let's talk about some of the specs real quick. It's four inches for the handle. It's the hair over. Overall, it's 5.1 inches, including that tang, bottle opener, whatever you want to call it. Okay? Overall length is six and a half inches. This is not a speed rocket to deploy. You're just a hair over six and a half inches. Okay, 2.6 inch blade from the scale to the tip, the tip that we'll talk about. Um, the blade thickness is 0.119, blade steel is N690. This weighs in at 3.8 ounces. The overall thickness, it, it's very much tapered. So it starts out at about 0.82 inches and tapers down to 0.63. Runs on phosphor bronze washers with that four ball bearing spring loaded detent system, if you will. The blade grind, let's zoom in. We're not going to be able to really show you, but it Peter has deemed it Kovex because it is concave on this front side. And I'll put a picture up here kind of explaining concave versus convex in the corner or something. Basically, your concave is a hollow grind on this edge. 
On the back side is convex. I get it confused. I have to look over at my notes, which basically means it's it's the opposite of hollow grind. It's bowing out. And this one is bowing in. So it makes it very sharp. It means you only need to sharpen the one side and then you strop this side. So it's like a chisel grind. However, there is some curve. So it, it, it's not going to really show up, I don't think. But you kind of get it. And from the picture, maybe you'll understand. The tip, sort of a tonto. It is just blunt on the tip, and that is to make room for it to rest against the stop pin right here in the butt end of the handle. So it's very purposeful and thought out and pretty unique and genius. Now, typically, if I zoom back out here, Typically on the blade of the knife, I don't necessarily love this little thumb ramp thing. I mean, it's aesthetically to me, I would almost rather it go straight across. However, when this is in the closed position, I like the fact that it mimics the handle. This way you can get a good grip if you are going to break glass you have a place to put your thumb if you're going to bottle open. I think it's very useful. And the aesthetics when it's open really doesn't bother me much because it is a very comfortable thumb ramp. This thing is sharp. You do have that tip here at the edge so you can get into material. Um, I think it's a cool knife. Let me glance at my notes. I think I've covered most everything. Peter and Joyce, if I missed something or misspoke, please let me know. And if any of you viewers have questions, also please let me know. Because the, the stains were so gracious, I have this in my collection now. And this is not something that's going to be for sale or anything like that. This is truly a place of honor in my collection because... As I've said, I don't, I don't think I have ever gotten a knife from a maker to keep. So, I'll put my notes to the side. Let me give you a couple of quick size comparisons since I have rambled now much longer than necessary. I am sure that that's the Sharpie, the Spytrico Delica. Uh, I do not have another South African knife, but I do have a Canadian knife. And maybe that's a thing. Should I start a sub-collection of knives around the world and own a knife from all over the place? I don't know. That's an interesting thought. Hmm. Hmm. I do have a Russian knife here. The Shirogorov RJ Martin collaboration, the soft overkill. So I think that I have a Canadian knife. I've got a South African knife. I've got a Russian knife. I've got a bunch of American knives. Um, that's probably, oh, and I have a U um, from the UK. I have Phil Harvey from the UK. So I do have some international knives that I own. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if I should start an international sub collection. And again, if you have any questions on this, please let me know. I will put a, a link to my South African playlist up in the corner. I think you get your most amazing bang for your buck from the South African makers. The quality is amazing. The materials used are amazing. And the price is beyond belief. And every single South African maker I have ever been in contact with has just been amazingly friendly, helpful, and their customer service is fantastic. So I cannot more highly recommend South African makers. Um, yeah, I just, 
I think they're amazing. So, Peter and Joyce, thank you again. All of the viewers, thank you very much for watching. And if you've made it this far, please comment South Africa down below.